Today, the gospel reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 30. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. We are on the fifth Sunday of Lent, and actually kind of like the final Sunday, next Sunday will be Palm Sunday, and the Sunday after that, Easter. But today for the fifth Sunday of Lent, we are focusing on It Is Finished, and using the sermonic theme, living my life like it's golden. Living my life like it's golden. Michael Webb was a businessman in China in the early 2000s. While there, he met and fell in love with Xiao Jie Tun. They met in the city of Nanning, which is 200 miles from the Vietnam border. Neither spoke the other's language, but it did not stop them from becoming close. Xiao Jie Chun showed Michael Webb, parts of China, many Americans do not get to see. She took him off the beaten path. He was swept off his feet, he recalls, by her beauty. He also came to love her 11-year-old daughter. He describes her as sweet and a joy to be around. They married in 2004 with 100 people from all over the world that came to witness this love affair. And then he moved her and her daughter to Florida and adopted her daughter as his own. Once in America, she was curious about everything. Everything was so new to her and she wanted to desperately learn. In 2010, the family moved from Florida up to Georgia. A couple of months later, Tan's dream of becoming a business owner came true and she opened up her nail salon in downtown Marietta Square outside of Atlanta. Tan bought two single family homes on her own and commercial property. She worked so hard and she was successful at what she did, her husband describes. She wanted to work and went from being a nail technician to owner of three massage salons over a period of time. Shao J. Tun's daughter, Jamie Webb, describes her mother as frugal she says her mother made a life for herself in the United States, building a family, launching businesses. She did everything for me and for her family. She provided everything. She worked every day, 12 hours a day, so that me and our family would have a better life. Well, the couple split up in 2012, but they remained close friends, continuing to raise their daughter together. She would bring him lunch, and he would help her remodel her business. She'd always say, we family, we family. Even when they got divorced, Michael Webb recalls, she'd say, we family, we family, because that's how she was. They cried together at their daughter's graduation from the University of Chicago, and I mean University of Chicago, University of Georgia, I got Chicago on my mind, in 2019. Some Asian massage places are known for providing sex to clients, and they are known for providing spaces where there are sex trafficking victims. Yvonne Chin says there is not enough discussion about the violence that comes from buyers, from men that purchase that service. Disclaimer, we do not know what kind of spa Xiao Jie Tun ran, but on this past week, one such buyer took things to a new level saying the spa was a temptation and that he wanted to eliminate the spa and the temptation that it brought. His church taught him that such desires would land him in hell, and so he took eight lives to fight his addiction. The other two were in her shop, and they were on a date night. The other four were at two other massage parlors in the Atlanta era. This is where we enter the biblical text today, Jesus' seventh and final word, it is finished. 
As I imagine the violence that showed up for Shojay and seven others in the massage parlor, it is finished has a certain weight to it. It's finished. Shojay Chun's daughter said in two more days, they were going out for a simple slice of strawberry cream cake for her birthday. That's what she loved. Her family back in China burned a candle celebrating what was to be her 50th birthday. They cannot make sense of this act. She wanted to travel the world and often would ask her clients where had they been and ask them all kind of questions about where they had traveled. She had drawers full of brand new clothes with tags still on them waiting for that day when she would be able to travel. And because of the horror of it all, they are pretending to her mom that she's still alive. But hiding it from her mom doesn't change the fact that it is finished. It is finished. Jesus had three and a half years of ministry. You know this story. He was a magnet for followers, people dropping what they were doing and choosing to follow Jesus. He taught the same Torah, but he taught it differently. He proclaimed that he had been sent by God to come help us. He talked with people that we don't normally talk to. He talked to the people on the church lawn. He talked to the sex traffic workers. He talked to the immigrants trying to pursue the American dream. People who scam people, tax collectors. He spent quality time listening to people's stories and healing brokenness. His will was God's will. He was suspected, and for as many followers as he attracted, he also developed some enemies, and they sought to get him. And the whole criminal system went along with it, and they mocked him and made fun of him. Where is your God? Get yourself out of this with your superpowers. And he took it. Not a very dignified way to go out for those of us that got a lot of ego. His disciples lost and others misplaced their faith. And there was Jesus alone. He felt anger and sadness and disappointment. And he was part human and part divine. This street, this spot on the cross took him under. He didn't deserve his eye. Not like that. And after all that he declared... This is all I got for you. It is finished. All of Lent brings us to this spot, to death, to dying. Two, it is finished. Death is powerful. My dear friend yesterday texted me, Kim, that her mom had passed. Early in the day, she said she was rushing her mom to the hospital, to the ER. Then she said it was a false alarm. But then later that night, the text mom passed. Many of us have lost people that have left big, big holes in our hearts and our lives. I remember my dad two days before he died, well three days actually, we got the phone call, come, it's serious. And other family members were flying in and many already were in Virginia, but people were loading the hospital. And I come from a big family, at least the hill side of the family, even if I'm the only child he has. He kept looking up, and each time he looked up, he would see different people coming in. And finally, he said, wow, y'all act like I'm about to die. He's a jokester, and we started laughing with him. But he did die. And death, no matter how we frame it, leaves a bit of loss in our lives. So I know that those of you that listen are wise and smart and have been impacted by death, because I hear your stories of people you once loved. Sometimes for all the right reasons, it stops you right in your tracks. And it's all because we chose to love. Xiao Jie Chun was love. And it's terrible when people who profess to serve the same God as we do use their choice to take another person's life. And yet, I have a little bit of good news today, though it might not feel like it. It isn't finished. Over 2,000 years later, the story of Jesus still saves, impacts, and transforms lives. It lifted my soul. It reached my heart. It illuminated my path. And today, I'm not telling you something I heard about or something I've read about. I'm telling you something I know that changed my life. And I know it saved and impacted some of you, too. This story still draws people from all over the world. It steadies our feet and gives us peace. Xiao Jie Tung also was a Christian. Even in a communist country, her parents were Catholic and raised her and her sister in the faith. 
This, is, this story has drawn people from all over the world who speak different languages but recognize the language of the heart. It is not finished, people. It is not finished. Jesus did more in three and a half years than some of us maybe do in a lifetime. I have been listening to this podcast that asks us to walk. And you know how I feel about walking and exercising, but I like it because in order to listen to the podcast, I have to walk. And so for Women History Month, they're talking about different women, some alive, but many who have transitioned. And these women lived their lives and they lived them under harsh conditions. And who knew? They surely didn't know that their life would continue to speak, that it wouldn't be finished, that death was not the final word. One such person is a native of Chicago, Lorraine Hansberry. Lorraine Hansberry wrote the famous A Raisin in the Sun, and I didn't realize that actually it's not just a play. It's a story of her life. It's an autobiographical story. And so after she died, her ex-husband put a play together from her writings called To Be Young, Gifted, and Black, which was the longest off-Broadway play in New York. Well, who knew? that after she died, much of her work would go on to be published and be popular and be a voice. But here's the thing, it's not finished. Death is not the final word. It is not finished because people live in our lives and their words and their doing and their actions live on. I used to hear this saying a lot when I was young, God's gift to you is your life. And what you do with it is your gift to God. So what are you doing with it? What are you going to do with it? I have a couple of suggestions for you. Wear those clothes with the tags on it. I've heard so many people talk about clothes they got in their closet with tags on them. Wear them. Wear them. Don't leave them in the closet hanging for that special today. Today is that special day. Take out that expensive item you've been saving for a special moment and declare that now is the special moment. Mend a relationship that's been broken, that's on your heart, that you kind of try to push away, but it bothers you. Do something on your bucket list. Have a conversation with a random stranger. Create a vision board of where you want to go. Buy a plan and talk to it. Don't just water it. Talk to the plan. There's a question floating around. If you had one hour, what would you do with it? I've always been tickled by this question whenever I see it. Because really, basically, what the question is implying is if that's what you would do if you had one more hour, then make time for that one more hour to do what it is you think you would do if you had that one more hour. And I've got one just for people at United Church of Hyde Park. Go beyond, go, go beyond your comfort zone. We really get comfortable here, and I'm pushing y'all. Go beyond your comfort zone. Finish the project. And Jade, you got that one. Finish the project. Call someone you don't normally call. Surprise them. A couple of weeks ago, I had a friend that was in my spirit, and I called her up, and she just started crying. I hadn't called her in a year. Trust that when someone comes to your mind, maybe that's the spirit trying to unction you to reach out. The next time someone tells you they're struggling, don't just say, ah, but offer to pray for them. I know a lot of you feel awkward praying, but really it's just communication with God. It does wonders. Pray for somebody. Offer. Help someone whenever you can. Because every day is a gift. And I'm sure those eight people that passed didn't know that they were living. And that they were going to die. Not, not on that day. Every day is a gift. It is a gift. So what are you going to do with this gift? What are you going to do with this gift? What are you going to do with this gift? I like the rules behind each sport, even if I've not watched sports faithfully. But I like the rules, and I like the rules that go with baseball. You see, in baseball, everything hangs on the ball and the person who is up on base. Now, I'm sure some of you fans would say, Charlene, no, you got it all wrong. But I'm at the mic, and I'm using the platform right now. You'll have a platform one day, too. So anyway, 
in my mind, and on this platform talking to you all, I think that everything hinges on the ball and the batter and the person that's up at the bat. I know it's about the team and the team playing together, but at the bat, it's all about that batter and that batter's connection with that ball. A ball is thrown, pitched, and there are rules about what makes a ball a good ball or a bad ball or even a strike. But none of it matters because the batter has a choice to swing or not swing within a matter of less than seconds. And so it is often with life. You have a choice to swing or not swing. And a lot of times life comes at you so fast. It's just a trillionth of a second that you have to make that choice. But when the batter decides to play in a matter of seconds, the batter has to swing and connect with the bat. With the bat, and depending on the timing and how the batter moves, well, the batter could score a home run. The batter has the potential to knock the ball out of the park. I think as God's people, it's time for us to swing. It's time for us to swing like never before. It's time for the people of God on the left to declare another narrative about the Jesus story and our lives and the value of diversity in our country. It's time for us to come to the bat and swing. Recently, this past month, the 2030 group got together because we get together once a month on Tuesdays. And I threw out some question as we were checking in. And there with us, Mina. Mina's one of our church members. She joined last Sunday, if you were watching. And Mina's all the way here in seminary, and she's here all the way from Korea. So I asked the question, and Mina began to share with us, one of our newest members, about an experience that she had. And she was sitting in the park, relaxing, because kind of when you go to the park, that's what you do. You kind of relax. And she's sitting there, and some old white man came up to her and began to yell at her. She couldn't understand what he was saying, but he was so angry. She remembers he was angry and he kept yelling. She tried to understand him, but one of the things she did understand is hate, because hate is universal and we get it. Now, I wish I could say that was a one-time experience, but Mina says this has happened to her over and over again. And as I listen to other Asian sisters and brothers, I have heard other similar stories. Stories I can't ignore. Mina today has offered us a closing prayer, and at the end of my sermon today, I'll read that prayer. This past week was a wake-up call, but honestly, we've been getting wake-up calls for a long time, and I'm not a morning person, but y'all, we've been getting a lot of wake-up calls. We can no longer let the ball just fly by. We can no longer call it a bad ball. We can no longer get strike out. It's time for God's people on the left to swing. And I'm here to tell you today, it's time for us to really get up to the, the placemat and swing. Living our lives like it's golden is not waiting for the perfect moment because there are no perfect moments, but it's seizing the moment that's right in front of us. It is time for us to live our lives and wear what we believe on our shoulders for all the world to see unapologetically liberal Christians, light shining, loving all of God creation, sexually fluid and bilingual in the language of love. It is time for us to put nice away because we've been nice way too long and live out loud and in full color with our LGBTQ flags on our boards, on our cars, and more importantly, in our hearts. It has been time for the left to live our lives in joy and liberation of the one who came to set the captives free. It's time for us to take this gift, this gift that we've been given, and live it in deep gratitude and wonder. The right has no problem, and I'm not going to give space to them today, but the left, we're so reluctant, we're so nice, we're so damn cautious. It's time for us to cross the tracks and to live our life boldly, out loud, and to live our life like it's golden. It isn't finished as long as there's breath and activity in our bodies. It isn't finished, and even after, it still isn't finished. Live your life, live your life like it's golden because it is a gift. It is a gift to us. Let us pray. Holy God, we believe that all of us are created in your image, by your hand, by your word. 
but we are not equally appreciated and rightfully respected. We lament, we grieve, remembering the Asian women and men of unwarranted hatred. We remember these women's name, Soon Chung Park, Hung Jung Grant, Soon Cha Kim, Yung A Yo, Sho J Tun, Dao Yo Fung. Some people continue to be threatened and killed and some people use their power at will and it has already become a systemic power. We condemn xenophobia, hate crimes, and racism directed towards Asian community in this country. We need you, God, to create new society. We need you, God, to live, exist in your image and your dignity. And we need us, each other, to keep fighting. Holy God, energize us to be against distorted privilege and power and system. Protect us and lead us to work for social change and justice. For those who have been harmed. Help us to rebuild peace and justice here and now. May we transform this country. May we disarm the culture of violence. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>